Attempts are the most effective and fun way to learn calisthenic skills. Let's talk about how to train with attempts to make progress as fast as possible. First off, let's define what an attempt is. An attempt is essentially a skill or combo that you're either A, not 100% sure you're able to do, B, something you've done before but is still inconsistent, or C, something you're able to do but you're not happy with the form. Attempts are often at a pretty high intensity level and because of this, I would recommend only doing maybe two to three attempts in a session. However, because of this high intensity, attempts are a great way to push yourself to the next level. All right, so there are many reasons why you should incorporate training with attempts into your skill training, and I'm gonna get into all of those reasons in this video. However, the number one reason that I wanna highlight is that attempting a skill is the number one most realistic way to get a feel for that skill. People ask me all the time how I come up with some of the little small cues I use for planche and some of the other skills I used. That is because I spent so much time trying it and each time I try it, I learn something and can apply a smaller cue the next time I try it. And while yes, a lot of your attempts will end in failure, that is actually a good thing. Each time you fail, like I said, you learn from it, you apply it to the next time, it's the next attempt session, probably gonna fail again, but you learn from that session and you just keep going and going until you are finally able to piece it together. And when you finally do that, it is so satisfying. And the other thing is a lot of people are scared of attempting stuff and they'd rather just stick with bands and leans or whatever progression they're doing because they think that the skill they're, they wanna learn is so far from them. But I completely disagree with that. I think attempts, can let you know how close you are to a skill. And just training with bands and leans all the time for planche, for example, would get really boring. And if you maybe try a planche, you know you're not gonna do it, but you just try it, see how close you can get. Maybe you'll surprise yourself and get motivated to train even harder when you're just training tuck progressions, band progressions, leans, whatever the heck, it's gonna feel just mundane and boring and you're gonna be like, where is this all leading? But if you incorporate a little bit of attempts into your trainings, maybe not every session, but at least once a week, you'll feel like you're really working towards something. Okay guys, so there are two types of attempts that I wanna highlight in this video. The first attempt, I kind of think of them as like foreign attempts where you're trying a skill, either a dynamic or static skill that you're not able to do, you're still working on it and learning it. Maybe you can do it with not the best form, but if you were to show your form to somebody, maybe most people would say you don't quite have that unlocked yet, okay? That's the first attempt. So with holds, it's like you're jumping up, slowly falling, never exactly stable. That's fine. That's how you learn. And with dynamic moves, maybe like planche push-ups, you're starting with pretty good form, then you're going down and ending the push-up in like banana back retracted form. Or maybe you're a meme like you know who and are just doing like elbow lever push-ups or whatever. That's the first type of attempts, the foreign attempts, skills that you're not quite able to do just yet. The next family of attempts is called combo attempts. And combo attempts are when you're combining various moves that you can already perform. So a combo attempt would be something like, I don't know, maybe full planche push-up to archer planche push-up. You know you can do a full planche push-up, you know you can do an archer planche push-up, but you're just not 100% sure if you can do them back to back. And this is a great way to train, it's a fun way to train, mixing and matching all the skills you can do in one set. Very fun and a great way to make progress because think about it, right? Like let's say you do something like planche push-up, dead planche push-up to pelican. Maybe next time you do two planche push-ups, two dead planche push-ups or one pelican or you know what I'm saying? Just do what you can to make your combo harder and that way you can progress. Okay, when it comes to attempts, of course I have to address injuries. That's probably the biggest argument against training with attempts is that you can get injured and that's true. You need to be careful you need to listen to your body. Don't try things that you think are gonna give you pain. And I'm considering making a full on video about this, but before you attempt to move, maybe get a feel for it first somehow and figure out if it's gonna be painful and then go for it from there. But listen to your body and never try anything that's going to give you pain. If you do this, you're gonna be safe. Also, make sure you are attempting skills that are still 
within your level. If you are a beginner, just got your first muscle up after like three months of training, it's probably not a good idea for you to go and attempt a full Maltese. Seriously, like of course you're gonna get injured doing that. So just be careful, listen to your body, and try things that are within your realm of skills. All right, so now let's end the video talking about how you can incorporate attempts into your training from kind of a programming standpoint, okay? So like I said, warm up first, and then attempts, because they are high intensity, they are what you should start with right after your warm up. And I would recommend sticking to the two to three attempt range. I find that attempts are very, not only physically straining, but they are also mentally straining because you're trying something completely new. Okay? So it's gonna take just a little bit more energy than it normally would. If it's a really good day and you feel like the attempts are getting really close, you can, of course, do more than three, but I really wouldn't go too overboard. I would just stick with the three attempts and wait for the next session because you're gonna improve and do better next time. Of course, always make sure you log your attempts. So either write down how the attempt went or film a video of it so you can look back and see how your attempts are improving. That's one thing that's really gonna motivate you because if you're not keeping any record of it, you're not gonna know whether or not you're getting better. So definitely make sure you're doing that. Going back again, start with the first attempts and then I would go back to some assistance. It kind of depends on what you're working on. If you're like attempting a dynamic skill, start with the attempts, like I've said 50 times already, then do that with some light assistance, then pick an even easier progression with that and then move down to basics. So attempts to light dynamic exercises and then basics at the very end. If it's a hold, I would say attempt to the hold, assistance hold, maybe a couple dynamic exercises, like if it's a planche, maybe some planche negatives or dynamic planche leans things of that nature, some dynamic exercises, and then again, always cap off the session with basics. Basics are freaking amazing. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching the video on training with attempts. I hope it was helpful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this down below, as well as some other topics for discussion you guys would like to hear. Please like the video if you did. Hit me with a nice subscribe, no jutsu, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.